Okay, I've started a roll for my next roll of beads. And for those of you who have been asking what the process actually is, I thought I'd give you a little quick video. So I made this little sliding thing here that fits, I made a hole in it that fits over six letters on my little chart. And then I know I have to pick up those six letters. So I've got a G, K, X, and then a U, X, U. So I go G, K, X, U, X, U. Make sure I've got six beads on my needle. And then I slide this down to the next six. This is just a magnet holding this in place. And this is U, U, X. We start with U, U, X. So we go U, U, X, and then M, G, Z. M, G, Z. And then I move it down another six. And I go across the whole thing for the whole row like this. I've got um, about, I think there's 150 beads in a row. And that's another six. And let me move it down again. S, 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 W, V, B. S, 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 W, V, Suckers don't like to be picked up. B. Then what I'll do is we'll go across this whole row and we'll speed this up a little bit. And then I can show you what happens next. But first of all, we're just gonna go pick up all of these. B, D, D, B. I'll finish this row and then I'll show you how we put it on the weaving. We're getting there. We got a W I P. P does not want to get on the needle. And I I I I I I. Needle gets full. We slide those off, and we'll keep going. W I V W. And this goes along pretty smooth as long as you don't miss a bead. If you accidentally screw up and you're one bead short on your roll, it's a big headache. If you've got one bead too many, it's easy, pretty easy, to figure out where the extra bead is and to just break it out. But if it's missing a one in the whole row, then you've got to take that whole row out and figure out what's wrong unless it's in a non-critical area. If it's like in the background or something where it's just random colors anyway, it doesn't matter. You can just throw a bead on at the end. But I haven't found that to be the case too many times. And this is RBP. SSX. So, you know, if you can't sleep, this is a good video to watch to help you go to sleep. You just go K, G, G, G. K, G, G, G. M, W, and we're almost at the end of the row. There's a few more. V, V, R, P, W, S. We go V, V, R, P, W, S. And then S, M, and four Gs. S, M, and G, 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 and then M, G, M, M, G, M, and then the 
MGM again. MGM. I don't know. For me, it's it just seemed to work out better that I only go six beads at a time. Some people could go a lot more than six. Some people don't want to go six. It, and most people don't have this little cardboard thing. I don't know what they normally do. And then I just put a little mark on that row so I know it's done. Then turn this a little bit. I take this and I bring it back here. I think you can see that. And then I'm going to kind of wrap that around my finger. I'll try to keep it out of the way. I'm going to bring this right here for now. And you can see what I'm going to do right here at the beginning. I'm just going to push the beads in between each thread. There's all the threads on top of this. Those are the warp threads that are coming up and down. And I'm just pushing the bead. So there's a bead and a thread and a bead and a thread all the way across. Just keep this over here as tight. Let me turn this a little bit so you can see as I go. Make sure there's only one bead in every bead space. And if you work close to the previous row, then there's already, the spacing is already exactly right. And you just gotta be careful that you don't skip any spaces and you don't get two beads in any space. Two beads is way more obvious than skipping one. When it gets a little goofy, you just back up your whole thread here and you just keep working your way. Oops, let's move it. Let's get it at the end here. Get down to here. Keep them going. This is where we see if we counted right or did I accidentally get an extra bead on there, which I think I did. Yes, I did. See, there's the extra bead right here. And I know, see, there's an empty one right here. See this empty spot right here? Oh, you can't see it. There go. There's an empty one I skipped right here. So what we do is we just pull them all the way off back to that spot. And then we just continue back on to where we were. So that's a really easy fix. Some of these transparent beads are a little hard to make sure that there's one in the space or that you're not looking at a transparent bead and it's really an empty spot. So now when we get to the end, we should have the right number of beads. Seems to me like most rows, I always think I'm going to be short one and it ends up to be the right number. Okay, then we get to here. Well then, now we take our needle and we go back through every bead, but we're making sure we're on the front of these, all of these warp threads here are behind the beads and they're behind. So now we're going to run this through here and pick up a dozen or two beads like so make sure those are all behind and then we pull that through and then we do the next couple dozen or whatever we can get on the needle just slide them through like so Not pulling this all the way yet. We can do that when we finish the row. Go a little bit further here. Do some more right here. Make sure you don't catch this thread in your work. And just catch some more beads, making sure they're all behind those threads because a lot of times they look like they are, and they certainly are not. I'm gonna go a little bit further. See, this part of the row is easy. As long as you got enough beads on your row. And then we go like so. Oops, come off to the end. And then pull all the way through. Bring all our, and that's all the way through. We snug it up so it's snug at both ends. 
And then what I do is I like to take, I have a little meat, a little ruler, and I like to just go behind it and push down and go along here like so. Push down just so everybody's straight on their previous row. Now, right there, you can see, get in here really close, you can see these couple beads right here did not get in front of the thread. So I could back this row out, which I will. I'll show you what we do to fix that. Now I gotta find where they were. They're right here, we got three or four. So what we have to do is take our needle, pull that thread out, like so, take it off the needle, pull the thread back out, back out. Rethread the needle. These nasty little suckers don't like to be threaded. Okay, then we make sure we got those little boogers where they belong. And we just finish the row just like we did before. Go back through. I always think I've got them on and there's always a couple that... Every once in a while there's a couple that you gotta fix like this. But it's much easier to just fix them as you finish the row than it is to go back and put in a whole new thread knot it and finish it off and start it up again and all that rough. So we just catch them at the end of the row. There. Now that row is done. And there we have another row done and we would start on the next row. And I'll give you a look at, here's what my chart looks like. It's got all these a symbol for every color to match the colors in my little bit tray there. And this little thing that I've been using just show, covers up. I can just see six in there. I'm sure you have bigger letters than those little things over there. See, and then see the little light, the little yellow, I've made a yellow pencil line every six rows so that when I put this on here like this and I do those six beads then I can slide this over and I stop when I come to the next little yellow letter. Otherwise if I didn't have those yellow lines it'd be kind of hard to keep track of how many were when I got to six beads or not. So that is a row. Thanks for watching.